Okay, so this should be the last part of the course 5A on co-op tests for correlation between networks. And in this final part, we address regression using uh, the co-op test. So a regression is useful when you've got multiplex networks with different types of links between nodes of a graph. Uh, it allows you to investigate the influence of several relation uh, types at once. So basically, the research question you can uh, you can ask is how the relation contained in three different graphs G1, G2, and G3 may affect simultaneously a fourth graph G. Uh, graphically, this means uh, having this graph and trying to see if the links of this graph, this graph, and this graph may affect the presence of links between the nodes of this graph. You perform the co-op regression uh, with the function netlm from the <coughs> sorry the package uh, SNA of R, and the results you got are very similar to a multiple linear regression, where we want to explain a variable by the combination of some other independent variables. So um, you can see here the distribution of residuals, and here the result of the regression. So x1, x2, and x3 correspond to the, uh, the three graphs g1, g2, g3 with which we want to explain the graph g and it had a constant term called intercept here so the value of the coefficient of uh, the variables of g1, g2, and g3 are here and here we've got the p-values uh, for every um, estimated coefficient uh, in addition, you've got two interesting, important uh, measures. Uh, the first one is residual standard error, which is uh, simply the standard deviation of the error between your model and your data, and the multiple R squared, uh, that is uh, the proportion of variance that uh, your model is able to explain um, in your data. So. Um, good models are models with a, a little uh, residual standard error and uh, high m multiple R squared. And finally, there is a warning in the manual page of uh, the function QAP that warns us that the QAP test should not be interpreted as evaluating underlying structural differences and that QAP is more accurately understood as testing difference induced by a particular vertex labeling which is controlling for underlying structures. So basically QAP test has been designed for the cases where the identity of the nodes matters. Um, for example, when actors uh, say who are the other actors with which they interact. For example, the nomination process in names generator, surveys, and so on. <clears throat> the second uh, warning is about the signific significance of uh, QAP test, which uh, does not necessarily imply that the observed structural properties of your graph differ really from any other comparable graph. So, in other words, it does not say that your network is special. Um, the third warning is about uh, the type of research question that you try to address. When your research question imply a particular labeling, uh, QAP can be very useful to remove some, um, some false um, reasons of correlation. Uh, so that is the case for us in uh, Orbis Networks. Orbis Networks perfectly fits the QAP test because um, we can see firm choosing firms for ownership uh, as a kind of labeled relationship, we can say that this firm has nominated another firm to to hold a part of its capital. So at the micro uh, level of networks of firms, QAP is uh, perfectly fit. Uh, but when the relation is not anymore labeled, so when you wonder about the shape of a group uh, friendship and uh, the shape of a group advice network, the QAP null hypothesis is inappropriate. So, in our case, when we consider a network of cities, QAP test can still be applied because uh, we construct the network of cities by saying that, of course, a city does not choose a city to have some firm ownership uh, links between, uh, for example, Paris and Rome, but 
inside Paris, there are some firms that have chosen to interact with some other firms in Rome, and they chose the firms in Rome uh, partly because they were in Rome. So, by construction, the network of cities is still compatible with Quap test, but the construction process of the networks of cities um, makes that you have still to uh, handle the result with caution because uh, the process of construction of your network have to be remembered when you interpret the result of a Quap test at this level of, of aggregation or higher, for example, large urban regions, airports, and so on. So, yeah, basically that's it. Um, the limitation of Quaps uh, is um, that there is no structural difference detection. Uh, to do that, you can check the GS core function of the package SNA in R. Uh, if, in case of large matrices, the computation cost is very high, you can not handle the interferences between some predictors. So basically, in a regression, you can you can't have uh, cross terms between two graphs. For example, uh, saying that a graph depends of uh, one graph times the other, the other graph. And finally, there is no standard error for the co correlation test because you measure the probability, the likelihood of correlation on the neural distribution. So this is the end of the course. Uh, we've seen correlation and networks and why it was difficult uh, on, uh, with classical uh, statistical tools. We've seen the principles of function of uh, correlation test and how it can be used for regression. Uh, you can see a tutorial for Quap application with R on the on the Moodle platform. You can check these two introduction uh, to to know a little bit more about network statistics. Uh, the main publication about Quap test uh, should be this article of Krakard. And sorry about that. Um, and finally, you can check. Um, the last well, the last thing to check is the manual page of the Quap test function to know the different options and the warnings uh, that we just talked about. Okay, that's it for this course. Thank you.